Okay, so when I left off with the example last time, you know, I said that you know P3 has just done a write of x. So there's a copy of x here in modified state, and the directory believes that the block is modified with node 3. Okay, now let's walk through a few more examples and, and, and a different and, and a few other different cases. Now let's say that you know node 4 wants to do a read of x. It has a miss in its cache because the block is now in invalid state. So it sends a request over here saying I'm trying to do a read of x. The directory reads out uh, the copy of x sitting here and the directory and it realizes that the block is now in modified state in node 3, right? So, you know, node 4 had no idea that this was going on. All it knew was that, you know, x's directory can be found in node 3, so that's where it sends its initial request. And the directory has kept track of the fact that the block is in modified state in node 3 and only node 3 can provide the data. So it forwards the request to node 3. So this is a forward saying that somebody's trying to do a read of x. Okay, and so you know this cache copy has to be downgraded from modified to shared. Okay, and you now provide a copy of x back to the directory. Okay, and this allows you to update the copy of x over here. So this is when the write back happens. So similar to the snooping based protocol, every time a block goes from modified to shared, that's when you also update your memory copy because from now on the memory copy is responsible for providing a copy of the data. Okay, so you update the copy of x in main memory and then you send back a copy of x to the requester so you place x over here in shared state. Okay, it's also possible for node 3 to have directly sent a copy of x to node 4, right? That would have saved you some time because it's only you know, one message as opposed to going back to node 2 and then going from node 2 to node 4. Okay, so you know, there are certain performance optimizations that you can try. Those also make the protocol a little bit more complex. So again, to keep our discussion simple, we'll assume that most transactions happen through the directory. Okay, so if you want to send a copy of, of X from node 3 to node 4, you first send it to the directory, and the directory then forwards it on to the requester. Okay, then let's look at a few other examples. Let's say that, again, node 3 had done a write, so there was X here in modified state directory says modified in 3 and let's say that node 4 is now trying to do a write into x okay so it has a miss sends a request over here saying I'm trying to do a write of x um, the directory realizes that this needs to be forwarded to whoever has the latest copy so this is a forward somebody trying to do a write of x and so this has to be downgraded to invalid and then you send a copy of x back over here and then you know this is this directory is changed to say that this is now modified uh, with node number four and here's the latest copy of x it gets placed here in modified state okay and again you could have a performance optimization where um, you say that the block gets directly sent from node three to node four right and that would have certainly speeded things up but I'm going to try and stay consistent in this class so that I can have uh, ass assignment problems that are easier to correct so I'm going to make sure that all transactions again go through the directory okay and you know also keep in mind that you know at some point this block X may get evicted from the cache you know because of capacity reasons and so when you evict a block if it's in shared state you can silently evict it without letting the directory know if it's in modified state then you do have to do the write back uh, into in, in, into memory again okay so also keep in mind that the directory information is sometimes going to be stale because you know somebody may have silently evicted a block and the directory thinks that someone has a block in shared state okay that's not going to be a correctness violation because you know uh, let's say this, this directory says that you know y is in shared state with nodes you know 2 comma 3 if someone tries to do a write to y you're going to look at this list of sharers and send out invalidation messages okay but if the copy of y has already been silently evicted this node is going to realize that oh you know I don't even have a copy of Y and yet I received an invalidation message okay so that was wasted that that was a wasted message but it does not lead to correctness problems so I should also mention that you know these directory based protocols you know while they are more scalable they are also you know more complex to design and verify because you can have you know all kinds of crazy corner cases okay so I talked about a case where um, you know someone let, let's say that there's a copy of X which is in um, which, which is in shared state somewhere let, let's say with node 1 someone is trying to do a write to X okay and so what you do is send the request here 
uh, you send an invalidation, you get back an ACK. So you can see that there are, you know this that that fulfilling one transaction requires all of these messages, right? And so for a long time, this block is going to be in some kind of transient state, saying that I'm busy perf performing you know one particular operation, and if somebody else tries to do a read of X at the same time, you know that operation has to stall until the first transaction is finished. Okay, so you know we can buffer that 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 uh, that subsequent request that shows up. And then you know once you get the ACK, you send a message saying, you know, here's the copy of X. And when this message goes out, you assume that the transaction has now finished. Okay, so you change your directory to say that this block is now modified with node four. Okay, and then you you are you are now willing to accept the next request that shows up. And if the next request is a read of X, you have to now forward that request to node four, right? So then you do a forward of X. And it's possible that both of these messages may, you know, this message over here and this message over here may take different paths on the network. And if this message somehow gets stuck in traffic, this forwarding message shows up over here before the copy of X itself. Okay, and so, you know, that's why all of these crazy situations may arise in a directory-based protocol. And so you have to design your protocol carefully so you can handle all of these cases. Okay, so when this happens, for example, uh, you know your your uh, controller over here has to realize that you know clearly in this case it looks like one message beat somebody else on the network. Uh, you know my last request was for a write of X, and so there's probably some response that is currently in transit. So I have to wait for that response to show up. I have to perform my write, and only then should I be responding to this forward request. Okay, so you know you have to design your your protocol very carefully to handle all of these. Uh, uh, these various corner cases. Okay, so you know while a directory-based protocol gives you higher performance in a large system, you also have to design it extremely carefully. Okay, so you know let me and there's an example over here that uh, I leave as an exercise, and let me let me just make sure that I've covered these other points um, mentioned on the slide. Okay, so uh, you know we talked about the states for a block, right? So when when you bring a block into a cache, that block can have a state of either M, S, or I, just as before. In the directory, you just need an M or an S state. Okay, and it's possible that you know this uh, this block may not be cached, in which case the list of sharers will be empty. Okay, but the block is either shared in multiple caches or zero caches, or it's in modified state in exactly one other cache. Then we also talked about you know the two conditions required to say that a cache coherence protocol is correct. Those conditions are write propagation and write serialization. Right, so write propagation is kind of obvious. You know, when you make a change, eventually, if someone tries to read that block, the the, uh, uh, the directory is going to forward its request to that writer, and the latest copy will be sent on. So, you know, every write is eventually propagated to uh, the readers. Let's look at the write serialization property. Okay, so let's go back to this figure again. Uh, let me clear it out. Okay, so let's say that you know here's a directory. Um, and let's say it's currently uncached. This one is trying to do a write to X. This one is trying to do a write to X at exactly the same time. Okay, so both are going to send a message to the directory. It's both possible that both both messages arrive at nearly the same time. But if you assume that there's a single network port, you know one of them is going to win the competition and is going to show up at the directory before the other one. So let's say that node one wins the competition. So the directory is going to say this is now modified with node one, sends a copy of X over here, then it th th then it processes the next request which says, uh, you know, I'm also trying to do a write to X. The directory says it's, it's currently in modified state with node one, so it forwards the request here, then the data gets sent here, and then back to node four, right? So in this case, based on who wins the competition to the directory, uh, you know, that's the order in which the writes are going to be performed. Okay, and everyone is going to see writes in exactly the same order. Because if a subsequent read shows up, it's going to get its data from node four. Okay, so it's going to be as if the updates by node one happen first, followed by node four, and no one else is going to see writes in an opposite order. Okay, so this protocol does fulfill uh, the write serialization condition that I mentioned over here. Okay, and you know this table just goes through more details. It just it just clarifies what happens uh, at the directory for every single case. So if the block is uncached. And the directory receives a read miss, then it has to send the data, make the block shared. If it receives a write miss, it has to send the data, make the block exclusive or modified. And similarly, I've covered you know what happens with each of these other cases as well.